The vastness of space might make the Earth look a little lonely in its journey around the Sun, but our planet is far from alone. It has us, for better or worse, and the thousands of human-made satellites we've thrown up into orbit. And it's had one constant companion these past four and a half billion years. The Moon. But it turns out that the Moon might not be the Earth's only Moon. It all depends on your point of view. First, we should set up some terminology. Moon is a weird word with a fuzzy definition. The International Astronomical Union, or IAU, are the arbiters of naming things that are up there. You might know them as the ones who kicked Pluto out of the Planet Club back in 2006. And according to the IAU, there is only one Moon around the Earth. That's the big, bright, gray thing in the sky that we are all familiar with, and its name is spelled with a capital M. The Moon. <laughs> any other solid object that orbits a planet, dwarf planet, or any other rock that orbits the Sun is called technically a natural satellite. So the moons that Galileo discovered around Jupiter in the early 1600s, and the dinky potato-shaped moons in orbit around Mars, and all of the other moons in the solar system that aren't the Earth's traveling buddy? Technically, not moons. At least according to the IAU. They do, however, accept that most people call those things moons anyway, just with a lowercase m. So feel free to debate with your friends if the following satellites are some of Earth's other moons. Anywhere the Earth goes in its orbit, it is by far the most massive object, so it tends to dominate the scene, gravitationally speaking. That means either pulling smaller space rocks into itself, ending up in a fiery death, or into orbit around itself. Sometimes that orbit's just literally a single loop around before the rock escapes back out into the solar system. Sometimes it sticks around for a few more loops. But that only happens for rocks that get close enough to the Earth, close enough that the Earth's gravity becomes more more important than the gravity of other bodies in the solar system, mostly the Sun. Astronomers call that region of space the Hill Sphere. Technically, every object in the solar system has one, but the more massive the object, the larger the Hill Sphere. The Earth's is about three million kilometers across, about four times larger than the distance between the Earth and the capital M Moon. So if there's something small hanging in an object's Hill Sphere, even if it's just one orbit, you can think of it as a lowercase m Moon while it is there. In fact, there is an unofficial term for these temporary satellites, mini-moons. And astronomers can use the size of Earth's hill sphere and the abundance of space rocks in the neighborhood to calculate how often our planet can capture a mini-moon. Back in 2012, one international team crunched the numbers and found that in an average year, one new natural satellite about a meter across will come join us. On average, it will stick around for nine months before spiraling down to Earth and burning up in the atmosphere, or getting flung further afield. The latest one was observed back in 2020. We even covered its discovery in a previous episode. Given their short lifespans, these mini-moons might not seem as moon-like as quasi-satellites. Quasi-satellites are space rocks that stay floating beyond the Earth's hill sphere, but their orbits around the Sun always keep them close enough to Earth that, from our perspective down here, they appear to hang out like our capital M Moon does. Astronomers have found five of these quasi-satellites so far. Each measures roughly a few hundred meters across. The most recent one discovered back in 2016 is called Komoaleva. Simulations of its orbit suggest it's been around for at least a century and will stick around for even longer. Sure, that pales in comparison to the capital M moon's four and a half billion years, but it's a lot longer than the mini moons we've talked about so far. And in 2021, one team proposed that Komoaleva might have come from the moon itself after a collision chipped it off. Now, if you don't think any of these are moons because they're too small, you're going to love our final example, a mysterious cloud of dust that might share the Moon's orbit, or a special place in the Moon's orbit. When you have two orbiting bodies, like the Sun and the Earth, or the Earth and the Moon, there are a few locations where their gravitational influences kind of cancel out. These are called Lagrange points, and two of them, called L4 and L5, are located off to the side of the smaller body. It is these points that intrigued a Polish astronomer named Kazimierz Kordoluski back in the 1960s. He published a paper claiming that he saw bright spots at the Earth-Moon L5 point, indicating that some kind of dust was hanging out there. Unfortunately for him, nobody took that claim very seriously. Most astronomers thought that anything that tried to settle down in one of these two points would quickly get ejected by collisions with energetic particles streaming through space or by the Sun's gravity. But in 2018, a team of Hungarian astronomers came to a different conclusion. They modeled the four-body Earth-Moon-Sun and Cloud-Moon system, and found that these points 
points would be stable for at least a month, maybe even years. But they also went looking for physical evidence of Kordelewski's cloud moons sharing the moon's orbit. And they did find some. The presence of polarized light coming from L5 suggests some amount of dust is hanging out there. And if there's a clump of dust following the moon in its orbit around Earth, well, then you just might be able to call that clump a moon of sorts. You know, if you really want to poke at those astronomers in the IAU. Whether or not a cloud moon really does exist, the stability of these L4 and L5 points brings up an intriguing possibility. What if we could tow an asteroid there and park it? Astronomers could get the chance to study an asteroid up close for decades, while more industrial-minded humans mined it for resources. While nowhere close to a reality yet, this is a serious consideration from space agencies. After all, while the IAU says that we only have one capital M moon. Who says we can't add a couple more small m ones? But maybe one thing that's got you thinking about what would happen if the Earth had a much larger second moon than a small asteroid, something similar to the moon in size, what would that mean for life on Earth? Well, it's your lucky day. We've got an episode about that over on our main channel already for you right now. Check it out here, and thanks for staying curious.